Hi everyone, welcome to my channel's first podcast episode. I've always wanted to do like my own podcast type thing. And so I decided why not just go for it. It'll be, you know, like a, an opportunity for a long format type video that a lot of people have been wanting from me. And it'll just be technically a really long draw with me where I just talk about whatever topic I decide on. And I will essentially just be sitting down here and watching myself draw just like everyone else who will probably click on this video. Although, you know, most people will probably be listening rather than watching, but at least there's something there for you to see if you do ever decide to look up at the screen. And so before we get into any topic or anything like that, I wanted to explain why I decided to just go forward and do a separate podcast thingy that is supposed to be different from my typical draw with me's. And it's because in my draw with me's, I always felt like I needed to talk about what I was drawing or I needed to talk about like art related topics, but a podcast kind of opens it up to broader topics where it doesn't even have to be art related. It, it could just be about whatever anyone wants me to talk about, whether it's like my opinions or just about myself. And it'll also be a great opportunity to implement my personality more into the channel and for you guys to get to know me, get to know like the artist rather than just the art or even just to get to know the person rather than an artist because that's probably something I'll talk about later in the future. But, you know, every, behind every artist and every work of art is still a person. And not everyone wants to be known for what they can draw. You know, like some of us still want people to know us for, for who we are, separate from our art. And so this is going to be my way of, of doing that so you can get to know me. But with that said... Obviously, because my channel is art related, I'm still going to be choosing primarily topics that are related to art. And I did ask around on the community tab um, what ideas you might have for future topics. And I've written down some of the, um, the ones that people have suggested that I think I can actually talk about for an entire hour by myself alone. And who knows, maybe if this podcast grows and people are interested on being on it, I can get guests in the future. Because it'll definitely be a lot easier to have someone to, you know, like talk back and forth with instead of just talking by myself. But no worries, I can definitely, definitely just talk about like something for an hour. Like, because I'm lucky enough to be the type of person who can kind of just find any sort of passion about like any topic if I try, like even if I don't know anything about it, but let's not get too much into that. So this is kind of like unplanned of a topic because it, it was just the first thing I thought of and I was like, hey, I could, I could talk about that. I could tell stories about how, like about what my experiences were uh, studying art or just being in an art class in general. And I just named it School Versus Art because I didn't want it to be this, this long convoluted title about my experiences in art school and high school and college. But that's basically what it's going to be. And I know like, at least like when I was younger, I was really curious to know like, what, what do people actually do in art school? Or what do people actually do in art classes? Because it's not something you get to see a lot, at least like when I was younger. And I guess it's not something that people are really transparent about nowadays. Because you you just have to go to like art school to um, see how it is for yourself. And I actually don't go to an art school. I've probably mentioned before in my other videos that I am majoring in art. I do go to school for art and I want to get a degree in art, but I don't go to an art school because I can't afford it. And 
So I just go to a regular university, but I'm majoring in art. And I've never been to any sort of art school because those are usually private schools that are like for profit and they're like massively, massively expensive, which I have my gripes about. So I only know how it feels like to take regular art classes in a regular school for, you know, people who are interested in art and and it's like maybe if you're listening to this and you're considering like should I go to art school this might help you kind of gauge like what what you can learn in a non art school college so yeah just to let you know none of this is scripted i haven't even written anything down i only i only know the topic that i'm going to talk about so this might be very disorganized so i apologize if you're like not into that but I actually wanted to to start from the beginning first, so I hadn't taken any art classes whatsoever until high school. And in my freshman year of high school, I knew I was like, I want to have an art class. Like, no matter what happens, I will fight to be in this art class. But when you're in eighth grade, at least in America, and the you're meeting up with the counselors and advisors and you know, they're signing you up for your future classes in your freshman year. You can't sign up for electives yet because you you have to start with like the general education, like math, English, science, you know, all that. And so I couldn't like I, I didn't have room in my schedule to fit an art class in my first year. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I don't want to I don't want to wait an entire year just to take an art class. And by that time, I was uh, 15, I think, in freshman year. I, I was, I'm a bit old for like my grade because uh, I moved countries and like that kind of like interrupted where I was in the system. But um, that was random and off topic. But um, so I was like 15 and I had already like exposed myself to a, a social media art basically. And I've watched tutorials already by the time that I was in freshman year. So I already had like a fair bit of knowledge about like the basics of art. And I didn't want to wait any longer to kind of like reach um, like the respect of professors, not professors, the respect of like my high school art teacher so that they know what I'm capable of and like what my potential is already. And I didn't want to waste any time. So I was like, I want this art class. And so what I ended up doing was I had to make a spot in my schedule because you could only have eight periods. One of them is lunch. And so I took zero period PE, which meant that I had to go to school um, an hour earlier than everyone else. And I have one extra class. So I had... um, I had seven classes instead of six, which like just sounds absolutely terrible for someone barely getting into high school. So I did zero period PE. I managed to get an art class, but all of this processing and all that with like the counselors and stuff took like at least a week to be done when I uh, when I first started school. So it's like first day of school, went to the office, told them, hey, can I do this so I can take an art class? And they were like, yeah, but it'll take a while to get processed. And I was like, cool, as long as I can do it. And so once I got there, second week of school, I have my new schedule in my hand. And I'm like this ball of anxiety because like I'm technically late. Like after a week, everyone like knows where they want to sit and they know who they want to talk to in class. And so it's just going to be like a class of people who've had an entire week to adjust. And I'm just going to like, I'm going to be the new girl basically like walking in there. And I just like, I totally forgot that there's not going to be any other freshmen in this art class because like freshmen usually can't take electives. 
And so when I walked in there, I was so nervous. I was like shaking in my boots. Well, I wasn't wearing boots, but I was like, I was like shaking while holding my like new schedule. And I was like, oh gosh, like, like I walk in there and it's just a bunch of juniors and seniors, third years and fourth years. And I'm here, I'm like fresh meat. I'm just this 15 year old freshman amongst like 17 and 18 year olds who were probably like, who is this chick? And it was like one of the scariest moments in my high school life. But um, went up to the teacher um, and she was just like, okay, go just go sit down, whatever. Like go sit down wherever you want. And my high school art teacher, we only had one art teacher. Then later on, we got a second one. But I stayed with the same art teacher throughout all four of my years. And she is a very chaotic teacher. So, like, I guess think of, like, the very typical uh, kind of quirky, eccentric uh, art teachers that you would probably run into. She is that. Like, her class is so disorganized. She doesn't have lesson plans. She doesn't lecture. She's just kind of like okay, we're going to draw this today. Go and draw it. And I'm like a freshman. I don't even know how high school works yet. So I, I was like, what is going on here? You know, I didn't, I never talked to anyone in that class. And one of the only empty seats there, which is where I sat, was right next to this group of like really scary looking senior guys. And I was like, oh gosh, like, why did I do this to myself? And so we got in there um, and I'm not the type of person that will just like go up to my my teacher and tell her like, hey, I know how to draw. Like, can I do something different from all this like beginner stuff? You know, I, I was just dealing with it, hoping that I could learn something new that I didn't already know. And so I was just going with the flow. And eventually, as we went through assignments, um, my professor... My, not my professor, my teacher, my high school teacher, uh, recognized and acknowledged like my existing skill. And she started to have me do different stuff. And um, my my older sister, who went to the same high school as me, actually had this professor. And she like painted for her and everything. And she was she kind of, kind of turned into like a TA because she was also like more experienced than everyone else and so I was like maybe I could have that type of like thing in this class too if she she notices that um I am more experienced in art and it didn't really happen I'm but I did end up eventually doing different things than everyone else because she didn't want me to get bored in the class but let's just say that I didn't really learn new things in that class. Um, I guess I learned like facial proportions, but that was stuff I already knew. And I just kind of was forced to, to have more practice because of the assignments in the class. And, um, one of the things that I did get to do that I was completely new to was painting because I was, I'm a digital artist and I'd only ever touched digital stuff other than like, you know, drawing in a sketchbook. I'd never painted. I've never watercolored. And so that's what we did in that class. You know, she introduced me to acrylic painting, dealing with canvases. I remember being so confused when um, it was a first painting assignment we had. And uh, I think it was still my freshman year. Don't remember. But um. She was like, okay, everyone get your canvases, gesso it up, prime it, and then come back to me when you've done that. And I was like, what the heck is gesso? What does priming a canvas mean? And that's one of the faults of my teacher was that she she would just throw like these vocabulary words everywhere, like art words, and not explain what they meant. And so I was like, what is gesso? Like, is it's like, am I even hearing this word correctly? But um, eventually she explained to me because I like went up to her all confused and she was like, gesso is like a white paint primer that you prime the canvas with before you, you 
paint and put anything on it. And I was like, okay. And I learned that. And I'll never forget that now because of like that high school class. And uh, I learned that I'm really bad at painting like with acrylic. And I learned that I, I hate acrylic because acrylic, um, it's difficult to blend and it dries extremely fast. And I just wasn't used to it. And uh, watercolor, I also sucked at watercolor. I forget if I tried gouache in that class, but it's kind of the same thing as acrylic and watercolor. It's like a combined version of watercolor and uh, acrylic, so I also didn't like it. And then uh, we did a bit of collaging because it was an intro art class or a beginner art class. And I, I hate collaging. I don't enjoy it. And so I was just like, I felt like really ant antsy in that class. like restless because I was just like this isn't what I want to do like when do we get to the stuff that I enjoy doing when do we get to drawing characters and people and that was like the one expectation or excitement that I had whenever thinking about our classes was like oh like we'll eventually get to the part that I want to do which is like what digital artists typically do is character art but you just, you never really get to that until college. And so high school art was really, really boring to me because I had a professor who was um, a landscape artist. And so we were primarily doing landscape or like other different projects, but we never ever touched up on character art. We drew humans and faces like for a week and then we moved on and never went back to it and so there was this this huge feeling of unsatisfaction when I was in high school and um having an art class and that was just one art class like my high school didn't have a variety of art classes it was literally uh in a beginning art class and then intermediate art class and those were the two art classes that you could take in your last two years of high school. But I started taking it when I was a freshman. So I was an intermediate when I was a sophomore. And then junior and senior year, I was just like, wait, like what art class do I take? There's nothing higher for me to take. And what I ended up doing was just basically retaking intermediate art like two more times until I graduated. And I have another story later on for how I got that but yeah um high school art was definitely like boring because it's not targeted um and it really just depends on the the teacher that you get whether or not you can like kind of strike a bargain with them and be like hey this is what I want to do with my art this is what I want to work towards can you help me do that and I wish that I had the balls to tell my my teacher I would like to do character art and I know you're not a character artist but is there anything you can teach me that I can apply to character art because I never ever said that to her and so I was stuck kind of doing whatever she wanted me to do even though I didn't particularly enjoy it or I didn't want to draw it. And so junior and senior year comes, I have like slots for electives and I was like, okay, I want to take an art class. Told my counselor, I want to take an art class. And then I had this huge thing where I almost fought my counselor because he was just refusing to put me in these, these art classes because um, junior year came, I told him, put me in an art class and he's like but you've already taken our two art classes and I was like okay well can I just retake the intermediate class you know like what's wrong with that and he was like oh like why not take another class and I'm just like because this is what I want and you know it's like those that annoying bit about counselors where they just insist on making you do what they want you to do and they disregard what you actually want. 
like for no good reason at all. Like, why would I take some random elective that I don't care about when I just want to draw, you know? And that's the thing too with high school is that when you're an artist or if you have an interest in pursuing art as a career, no one takes you seriously. And it's so annoying. Um, so I told him, give me this art elective. And he was like, okay. So junior year, I got it. Then senior year comes, same thing happens. We get into this altercation where he doesn't want to give me this art class. And so I have to go to my teacher and tell her the counselor doesn't want to put me in your class. And um, she writes him a note that says, make her my, my TA, my teacher's assistant in this class so, so that I can have her for two periods straight. Because I had a lot of uh, slots by, by my last year. And um, even with the note, like it was really difficult to convince this counselor to put me in these art classes. It, it was just so frustrating. Like I can tell that I didn't, like he didn't respect me and he wasn't taking me seriously. And so it finally got this counselor to budge and give me what I wanted or to take me seriously actually was me showing him my art. So like I went to his office one lunch or some day and I showed him my iPad. I showed him my art and I told him, okay, Mr. So-and-so, this is what I do. I drew this for people. And I got paid for it because at that time I was already doing a fair bit amount of commissions. And my uh, my goal in getting two art classes with that teacher was so that I could sit in her class, bring my iPad and just work, you know, and earn money and develop my skills by practicing on these commissions instead of being in some boring old other elective class I didn't care about. And so I told him, this is what I want to do. This is my plan. And I'm going to hone my skills so that I could better pursue this career that I want. So that I could be better prepared for the college courses that I'm eventually going to take after I graduate. And I was like, so please, can you just give me these art classes? It literally... It's so easy for them to do. And um, he finally did it. Like, I finally convinced him to do it. And it's just so, so, so frustrating to be in high school and to be really passionate about art. And then, like, no one takes you seriously for it. Like, everyone else is trying to convince you to go into math or go into English or something. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. So I was a type of high school student who took the advanced classes. I was in AP classes and all that. And I had this um, art teacher and I had this math teacher who I was with for four years. I, um, actually, no, for three years. Um, I took him for pre-algebra or no, I took him for algebra. I took him for pre-calculus and then I took him for calculus. Um, in my senior year. And so I had built up this relationship with him and he got to know me as um, Lauren, who was really good at art and who apparently was really good at math because um, I was like one of the top students in that class. And he wanted me to pursue mathematics in college, like be a math major. And I told him like, no, like, I don't want to do that. I, I want to pursue art because I'm also good at art and I love drawing. I don't love doing math. And there would be like this cat and mouse game where every now and then he would try to convince me to major in math or try to discourage me from doing art. And I was like, no, it's not going to like, I'm not going to change my mind. No matter how good I am at math, I'm... I still want to do math. Like, I still want to do art. Sorry, not math. And honestly, like, I wasn't even that good at math. Like, now, everything that I've learned in calculus, I've forgotten. 
I couldn't like solve a calculus question now. And I just, it's like so annoying how he saw that I was really passionate about art and not passionate about math at all, but he didn't believe in my ability to, to reach success with an art career. And uh, like part of me wants to go back to my old high school and like talk to him and be like, like, look where I am now. Like I'm a full-time artist and I'm earning a decent living from it. And I'm happy doing what I do. So like take that, my calculus teacher. But anyway, that's that was high school. And going into college, um, like I was looking at all these art schools. I looked at uh, an online art school that was in Colorado. Um, I think it was like Rocky Mountain College of Art or something. Because it was uh, one of the cheaper ones and it was online so I didn't have to like move to Colorado if I got in. And I had even like emailed a, um, a counselor back and forth. But then um, I realized that like I can't like I can't afford it even with financial aid. It's just too much and it's also not worth it because I realized that um, there was probably going to be a lot of things that. I already knew and I would just be wasting my time with the classes that I was learning. Instead of going to an art school for college, I decided to go to my local uh, Cal State University, get my general education units done, and then once that was over, maybe I could look into another art school and like get my art degree done at an actual art school. But once I got into college, I thought that art professors would have a bit more respect for me or like take me more seriously. But then there's also this stigma about digital art and digital artists where um, I guess it might be better nowadays, like these years. But um, I was a freshman in college in 2019, I think. And my first few art professors, they weren't too, like, enthusiastic about digital art. And they really only cared about you if you excelled in traditional art. And um, I didn't really excel in traditional art. I mean, I could, like, I could draw well enough, but my techniques when it comes to painting uh, weren't good. Um, and so... It was still pretty difficult to build up like a, a good relationship with my art professors. And that's one of the more important things when going to school for art is to like start building up a social network with the senior artists who could possibly get you to break into the industry. Because these art professors, like they live in LA. They teach at other colleges, they they know other artists, and they might have worked with some people who can get you into the industry, and social networking is one of the most important things about getting a job. And so uh, I'm trying to build up these relationships with the professors, but they just don't get me. And I'm also a, a pretty quiet person, and I try to connect to them with, uh, I try to connect to them through my art. And uh, it wasn't working because the art professors that I got my first couple of years was uh, they were abstract artists who like lived in L.A. And I'm just a digital artist, character artist who likes anime and video games. So there was a, a huge disconnect there. I did get a fair bit amount of respect from my intro to art professor who told me that I have a lot of prote potential, who told me that I have a lot of potential and that he's looking forward to having me in his future classes. But unfortunately, he's a 3D uh, teacher. And so I I didn't want to like break it to him the hard way. So I just kept quiet. But I knew I wasn't I probably wasn't going to run into him again because I, I'm not going to take any 3D classes in the future. Um. What's funny, though, is like when I eventually transferred to um, my college right now, 
it turns out that he actually teaches at this college too. And I could have had the opportunity to take one of his classes, but unfortunately it conflicted with my schedule. So I couldn't, but that could have been a nice reunion because I haven't seen him in like four years. And I, I wonder if he like remembers me. But um, another another professor I had early on who was also an abstract artist, um, he like, I guess he recognized that I was pretty good at what I do, but he's a type of professor that uh, paid more attention to the people who did uh, his type of art. So he gravitated more towards the students who kind of steered towards abstract art also. And it's uh, it's really discouraging to be in college, be excited about art, having these assignments, wanting to get closer to your professors, and uh, turning in an assignment that you're really proud of and hoping like to get a bit of praise from it or opinions from the professor, but then the professor doesn't really pay attention to it because it is not in the style that they themselves like to do. And so um, there was a lot of assignments in that class, which is uh, which was 2D drawing that I was really proud of. And I was like, I, oh, like, I wonder what the professor is going to say about this one. You know, I actually applied what I learned from him and uh, I'm proud of what I managed to achieve. But then he like barely looked at it, you know, and he um, he looked at ev everyone else's. And it's pretty discouraging. But after a few years of taking art classes in in a non-art school environment, um, I learned to kind of like not have so much expectations about art professors and to kind of like, I guess, expect the worst out of them. And it sounds like really discouraging, but um, you really can learn a lot from just taking regular art classes at a non-art school university. The only thing is that you have to like, you have to find the right university with the right classes that you want to take because the reason that I transferred to the college that I have now is that they have, um, is that they have more focused art degrees. So I can actually major in animation in the college that I'm taking right now. Although it's not exactly what I want because I want to, um, I want to major in, what was it? I wanted to major in illustration, like storytelling illustration, but they don't, uh, they don't have that in this school either. It's kind of just like integrated into animation. And so that's why I'm majoring in, in, uh, 2D and 3D animation now. But in my, um, my first college, they literally just had studio art and art history and studio art is more towards traditional art like painting drawing sculpting all that and that's nothing like that is i don't do that so i transferred and i had a lot of expectations or like excitement about this new college that i was going to because they had uh they have more targeted and focused art classes so Instead of it just being like a drawing class, instead you have um, figure drawing and animation and 2D design, 3D design and all that. And so I'm able to learn a lot more from these classes. And I just actually finished up my first semester at my new college and I, I really enjoyed it. I was only able to take four classes, but all of them were art classes and I'm glad to say that I learned a, a fair bit of like knowledge that I can actually apply to my digital art. So I took 2D design and 3D design. And um, even in 3D design, I learned like, I learned stuff that I could apply to my digital art. Like um, there's, gosh, okay. Like my mind just went blank. I can't like think of anything, but um, we did a lot of sculptures. And what I enjoyed in that class was, even though I didn't particularly enjoy actually making the sculptures, um, I liked that my professor had us always sketch up some sort of concept art. 
um, for the sculpture that we were going to do. And he, um, he had his go and approve it. And it wasn't just a single concept either. He told us to make like three or five drawings of an idea that we had. And it got, um, it helped me kind of experience this, this process of having an idea, drawing concept art for it, um, getting other people's opinions on each concept and then getting one approved and then uh, trying to execute that concept. And, and then you get to see like what changes while you're doing it, why something didn't work out, why something did work out. And, um, I, I had around like five projects in that class. Um, and each one we drew a concept and maybe only like two of them really looked like the concept art that I drew. And the other three deviated a lot because um, there was stuff that I drew in the concept that I just uh, couldn't pull off in like while making the sculpture. And um, that's something that I started like it got me thinking like, oh, this, this is probably how it would be like to uh, draw 2D concept art for like a 3D model for like a game or something. And then seeing how like what aspects of that 2D design can be made in 3D and why it's important for 2D artists and concept artists to also learn uh, about 3D modeling so that even though you are drawing a 2D concept, you are thinking in terms of what can be done in 3D. Um, and sorry if that was just like this rambling on on a tangent, but yeah, I learned like a good amount in that class, even though it wasn't like, I guess maybe it wasn't what my teacher uh, intended to teach me. I still learned something that I can can apply to like my, my future uh, profession or my future endeavors in art. Oh gosh, I'm like out of breath. It's tiring to talk. But where were we? Okay, so that was 3D art. Then I took 2D art, which is, um, it was a, a course that where we worked with Illustrator and we designed a lot of posters and we learned about like the the rule of thirds. Uh, we, we learned a little bit of color theory. Uh, we learned a little bit about color theory and that was stuff I already knew, but I learned, um, more stuff that I, I didn't even think about ever, like, um, hierarchy of design, um, and how to pull an audience's focus to something and all that. And I, I learned a lot in that class. Although I will say, um, the assignments that my professor had us doing turned out to be really ugly, despite us being in a design class, because um, it's like uh, the posters that we made in that class remind me of like really cringy, um, kind of like grungy, angsty, uh, like Tumblr posters for like fanfics. That's what it, it reminded me of, because like, there was one project where we had to pick a celebrity and then we had to like make a poster of them. And like everyone's looked like something that you would see for a Tumblr fanfic. Yeah, I still learned a lot from these classes. And I mean, it's still not like really what I was like envisioning uh, when taking art classes, but I think I'm getting there because I'm still in the realm of taking um, intro classes because of the pandemic and um, transferring. Technically, I already took these intro classes in my first college, but they didn't count for my new one. So I had to retake the intro classes and, you know, it's just kind of like boring and whatever. But I'm looking forward to getting to the classes that actually have like digital tablets. And um, I'll, I'll have professors who are digital artists themselves and I get to actually draw digital art turn in digital art for assignments instead of um, pencil sketches and pen drawings and, you know, like charcoal stuff. Like, I hate working with charcoal. Um, I hate, I, I hate traditional art. Like, I'm so used to the privilege of using digital art 
and being able to manipulate your art the way you want it to, to be able to flip it, to be able to erase and like liquefy it. And so I'm just like, I, I hate the, the permanent aspect of traditional art because I'm just like, if I mess up, then it's going to just be there like all the time and I can't do anything about it. And I want to flip my paper, but I can't. And, you know, I just, I just can't with traditional art. Although in the future, I am like looking forward to um, drawing or trying to paint some of my digital art. I don't, I don't know what else to talk about. So I'm just going to tell some stories about my, uh, about art in school. So let's go back to high school. So in high school, um, there got to a point where my, my teacher, my high school art teacher just like didn't know what to do with me. <laughs> and so um, the office like recruited me to draw something for the school. So um, I had my iPad with me and my my teacher was just like, hey, the, the principal wants you to draw a logo for the school. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you out there, probably like 80% of other artists out there who might be listening to this, we're all groaning. When you hear the word logo in graphic design, like people asking you, hey, can you make a logo for me? And I wanted to say no, but I I couldn't. Like I I wish that I wish I was the type of person back in high school who could just say no without fe- feeling any type of guilt, but I couldn't say no. And so I agreed to it, even though I was like, like, dang it, I don't want to draw a logo. And our school's mascot is a lion, so I had to draw like some sort of lion logo. And um, I'm sorry, but I literally just looked up like vector art of of a lion and i essentially copied it um or i i like took heavy inspiration from it and i'm not proud of it okay it is it's borderline plagiarism but i also didn't get paid for this and i doubt that they're giving me credit either like after six years on this thing that i made for them but so i I made the lion um uh, and then at one point I had to go meet the, uh, the principal. So I went to the office, I sat down and I was like, I, I was working on the, um, the lion vector art and I did it in vector so that, because I knew they were probably going to print it and stuff and they needed it high quality or whatever. And so I was sitting there, I was waiting and like the receptionist was like, Oh, like, what are you? what are you here in the office for? Like, why aren't you in class? And, and then I told her, I was like, oh, I'm drawing something for the principal. And she was like, can I see? And I showed her and she was like super impressed. And I was just like, oh gosh, like this isn't like, I totally just copied this. And like, I, sh- like, I, I felt so like dirty, like doing this. And so I got into the principal's office and it was like the first time I'd ever been in the, in the principal's office. And um, the first time I was actually talking to the principal, he like shook my hand and um, it was like this super formal thing. And I I showed them what I had and they were really impressed with it. And then I I asked them, I was like, are you going to need the PSD file? Are you going to need some something, something, something? And then I the, the look on my principal's face. Uh. When I tell you, like, this was a man who had no idea what I was talking about. And I was just like, you know what? Okay, I'm just going to give you JPG, JPEG. You know, they knew what a JPEG was. And um, that's what I did. I gave them a JPEG knowing that if they ever printed this, it was going to look like like crap. And that's exactly what they did. They printed it as, like, um, a low opacity background on, like, these um worksheets or like flyers for the school and it it, like it was so pixelated 
And then near the end, I was kind of expecting some sort of like compensation for it. Like give me at least like a $5 bill. Come on. Like it took me at least an hour, but um, I'm glad they did it because then I would have been paid for just copying someone else's work. But what they give me, what they gave me was a framed version of one of the flyers. It was like, um, probably like the, the size of those drawing pads. Like, I think it's like, uh, 22 by 26 or something like that. Like a big old framed version. It's just this pixelated like version of my drawing framed, like all fancy and nice. And then they're just like, thank you. And then they gave me the frame and, and I had to go home with it. I had to like, um, wait outside holding this stupid frame where everyone's like looking at me and staring at me. And he's like, why does she have that? You know? And it, it was so embarrassing. And I was so like ungrateful for it because I was just like, what am I going to do with this? Like, who's going to hang this? I'm not going to hang this up. I'm pretty sure it's like getting dusty in my parents' garage right now. Cause it was, I was just like, really? Like they could have done anything. Like they could have given me chocolate and I would have like been happier to, to get that rather than a framed version of the thing I did. Um, but I guess they, they did spend a fair bit amount of money on like the frame and printing it. And so I don't know, but yeah, I wonder if they're still using that art to this day. Cause I graduated in like 2019 and you know, that that's like, a few years ago, so who knows what they're doing with it now. Maybe they got some other artist to draw something else, and maybe they gave them a, fr a framed version of it, too. But um, that's my art story from high school. Okay, did I even, did I even really talk about the topic? So I guess the topic is school versus art. And I don't, like, gosh... Maybe making a podcast or having a podcast isn't as easy as I thought it would because this is so disorganized. I don't even know how to end this. I don't know what else to talk about. I really should have written up like an outline at least. Maybe I should do that in the future. But um, yeah, maybe I'll just talk about future art topics. Ooh, some I'm looking at the um the comments right now and someone says it would be cool if I could give you guys an art tour or a tour of my my progress over the years and I could definitely do that I could like spend an entire video um showing my old art and roasting it and seeing what we can learn from seeing that other people wanted some uh discussion over my art business and my sticker shop and all that, which I could do, but I'm a bit hesitant with it because I'm still new to all of this. And um, a lot of people ask for like tips and stuff, but I never really know what to say because I'm not like super knowledgeable. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not very strategic with what I do. You know, I, I don't really look at analytics and all that stuff. And I kind of just put stuff out there and I impulsively go and do what I want and um there's not a lot of planning behind it so I don't super know like what I would talk about it would try like it would probably just be me rambling about like the chaos and suffering that I went through when starting a business but um if enough people want that and if I find enough things to talk about I guess I, I will do that in the future um, uh, a really, really interesting one that someone suggested that I will absolutely for sure do is, um, uh, a podcast about how I designed my characters and how I design in general. And I, I can go off on ultra tangents about that and about like Pinterest and, uh, preparation for designing and then moving on to actual designing and then fine tuning a design. I could, I could do that. Emily here also 
asked uh, about the art mediums that I've tried and liked or tried and disliked since I started making art, I guess that could be related to this video. So I talked about it uh, before, how I didn't like to work with acrylic. Uh, I didn't like to work with acrylic paint. I don't like to work with watercolor. I haven't tried gouache yet, I think. I don't like charcoal. Um, I guess everyone likes pencil, the graphite drawing. Um, I kind of like to work with pen, like pen and ink. Um, let's see, what else have I tried? I don't like collaging. Um, clay is a bit fun, but, um, I really only did that in high school or like in middle school. And so I don't totally remember like liking it or disliking it. Um, I did like this clay project of uh, the gold rush. It was like a pan with water and gold and sand in it with clay. I made that out of clay. I wonder what I did with that. Oh yeah, here's another, another story about art projects. Um, this isn't in high school. It's in, uh, it's in seventh grade. In seventh grade, I had this uh, art history, no, not art history. I had a history, world history teacher who was like infamous for the castle project that she would do every year. So going into her class, everyone already knew that at one point in this year, we are going to have to make a castle, a 3D castle. And I was super stoked for this. I was like so excited because um my sister is two years ahead of me and she had this, uh, the same teacher and she also had to make um, her, her castle. And I was determined to make a better castle than her. So we got the assignment. Um, I got home and my dad uh, is also very artistic. He's, he's an engineer, but um, he, he's like also a carpenter. So he can like get stuff done with like 3d art and stuff. So I asked my dad for help which is kind of cheating because like he didn't help my sister. And so um, I told my dad, I was like, okay, I like, this is a castle that I want to do. This is what I have to do. And then um, that Friday, my, my plan was to uh, hang out with my friends and then go home and work on the project with my dad. And so I hung out with my friends. I get home and I kid you not, my dad has just constructed this amazing looking castle. Like it had tiny windows, a really detailed door, and it was uh it was out of styrofoam and cardboard and like it, it looked amazing and it was like 80% done. Like the the structure of it all was like I was like dumbstruck. Or or what is that the word? Dumbstruck? I was dumbfounded because I was like, you were supposed to assist me, not like do the entire project by yourself. But I wasn't complaining because he did all the work for me. And then um, my job was to just paint it. And um, and there was a so it was like the castle with like the walls and stuff. And so he he was actually like a bit grumpy because he he said that I didn't help him at all. But I was just like, that's not my fault. Like you were supposed to do this while I was here, not when I was gone. And so he was like, okay, you do the rest. And so I was like, okay, I want to make a well and like a like a wagon for like hay or something because it's a medieval castle. And the the well and wagon that I made looked so bad compared to everything else. And I was just like, what am I going to do? Like, what am I going to say when I present this? Because I, I don't know, like, what went into this. And, um, and so I just painted it and uh, eventually finished it. And let's just say it was the best looking castle there. Okay. But it, it wasn't because of me. It was because of my dad. And so we get there, and I remember like this um this girl next to me um she she made her castle that same morning. she literally just took a, a cardboard box, 
she put it upside down and then she got um a, an empty roll of toilet paper <laughs> like the the core of the the toilet paper and she just put that on top of the box and um she put some toilet paper on like a like a toothpick or like a q-tip for like a flag and she turned that in <laughs> and my teacher was just like you know what um i'll give you some effort the fact that you actually did something but um my teacher picked me as like one of the first people to go because she saw mine she really wanted to know about it and i was like i had a stage fright back then and um i was just like oh my gosh like what am i gonna talk about and then she asked me questions like while I was standing there. I, I would be like surprised if people or I wouldn't be surprised if people could see my hand shaking. But she asked me, she was like, did anyone help you with this? And I was like, yeah, my dad. <laughs> and she was just like, oh, like, what did he help you on? And I was like, oh, like he helped me construct the castle a little bit. Like, I wonder how much she believed that I was saying. But um. And then my, my, my teacher started like praising the paint job and how it really looked like wood or whatever like that. And I was just like, please just like make this over. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to talk and lie about how I made this, even though I didn't. And, um, and then it was over. And at the end of the day, she wanted to keep it because she has like some of the best, uh, castles from like every year on the um on like her top shelf on the side of her classroom and so I left it there and uh I wonder how long that lasted there because to make room for the new castles she just like threw away the other ones and it was kind of sad because those castles still looked nice she could have donated them to like an art exhibit or something but uh she just threw them away in the dumpster and I'm just like I would be really upset if at this moment my castle or my dad's castle, I guess, has been thrown away into the trash to make room for a better castle. But not gonna lie, I don't know. Like you would have to like be a genius to to like outdo what my dad constructed. Like it's crazy. Like he probably had calculations like to to construct that thing. But um it was like, I think most of it was made out of cardboard. But um, speaking of cardboard, I also worked with cardboard on my first 3D project this semester. And um, I didn't particularly enjoy working with cardboard, but I will say that it helped me realize that there's a lot of like things you can do with cardboard. Like you can just really DIY stuff with it. Like um, I've been looking for an easy access sticker storage and I would see like these things that people have on Instagram. Sorry, I just burped. Um, and Pinterest and, and I would see like these drawers or containers that people have on Instagram and Pinterest and I didn't want to buy it. And then I realized I was like, wait, I could just utilize what I learned in my 3D class and like DIY my own storage and so I did and um I've posted it on Instagram before let's see if like some of you saw that but yeah and that's what I use now and um there's just there's a lot you can do with cardboard and so um if you haven't tried making something with cardboard like DIYing something just like for at home use go for it honestly there's so many things you can do with it and if you order delivery from like Amazon a lot, you're going to have a lot of cardboard. So our first project was um, cardboard. And then the second project was a group project where we had to create an inflatable structure. And it was inflatable pra uh, plastic, basically, where we had to like use an iron to melt the plastic together and like create a sculpture out of it and um not gonna lie it was very painful to see like all the plastic everywhere and also discard it because i was like this is not this is not an environment and envir an eco-friendly project but um i didn't enjoy that i mean i guess it's kind of fun to like 
iron plastic together. Like if you've ever done that, like wielding plastic shut with heat, it's kind of fun, but I don't know how I could ever use that in my life again. Um, and then after that, we had to create a wearable structure. And this is something that I posted a lot on um, Instagram when I was making it. And um, we we had to uh, deconstruct like whatever we had, like a t-shirt for fabric or like whatever. And uh, we had to learn how to turn raw materials into like a sculpture basically. And it was all right, I guess. It was fine. I guess I could do it again in the future, but it's not something I would like want to do. But if I had to do it, I would probably enjoy some parts of it. And um, our last project, we worked with chicken wire, which is like this kind of mesh wire that you could just, you know, meld to whatever you want. And then I got scratched with it. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a, a, a scar on my drawing hand for like a long time. Or like forever since it's a scar and I'm kind of upset about it because you know this is a hand that you're gonna see in my draw with me and um it, it might be visible in this video actually if you look up right now or if you're if you're watching the video instead of listening but um I'm just like dang it now I have a scar on my hand it's ugly and it's it's gonna be there you know in my videos it's, it's just like going to ruin the aesthetics of my hand. But anyway, we worked with chicken mesh. And then after the mesh, we worked with a uh, plaster. And I thought plaster was going to be really fun because I thought it was going to be a little bit like clay where, um, you know, it's like wet goop that eventually hardens. And I was looking forward to kind of scraping it and sculpting it after it hardened, but um, it didn't work out. And also, I have a kind of a, a nasty story about the plaster, because in my college, we have a plaster area that um, we all had to go to to make the plaster, and we had to mix our own plaster, and it was very messy, but the, the gross part is uh, our professor didn't want us washing our hands in the sink. We had this, like, actual bathtub filled with water that we were all supposed to dip our hands in and uh, wash the plaster off. And then after the plaster is off, then we can go to a sink and wash with soap and everything. And it's, I mean, just think about that. Everyone is like 30 people are constantly dipping their hands in this same tub of water back and forth uh, getting water for their plaster, dipping their dirty plaster cups in it. Um, because we didn't have anywhere else to wash our plaster cups. And so it's just like, it's getting all of this gunk and goop from people's hands and their cups. And it's like, uh, you know, it's getting gross. And so <laughs> the next day, it, it, it was like pink. Like, the water was alarmingly pink. It it looked like someone spilled a little bit of Kool-Aid in it, and it turned pink. And I was like, is no one going to, like, say anything about this water? And it stank. It smelled, like, sour and salty. And, um, ew. I'm going to, like, gag thinking about it right now. But um, everyone was still using it. And the water was getting low, too. And, like... You could see the the plaster build up on the walls of the the bathtub, and uh, if you like dipped your your plaster cup to get some uh, water, it would like hit the bottom of the tub, and you would get like bits and pieces of like random black stuff and like red stuff. And uh, oh my gosh, I'm trying not to gag thinking about it. I'm sorry if this is so gross. I'm sorry that you have to listen to this, but it, it's a fun story to tell. And um, my hands and everyone's hands are dirty because we, this water is too low to um, to wash our hands in it anymore. And I I saw the the um the hose and the the knob for the hose, and I was really tempted to just like add water into it, but I didn't want to get in trouble. I'm that type of person who 
like if I see that something needs to be done, I'm scared to like take the initiative and do it because, you know, I'm scared. And so I was just kind of like waiting for someone else to to do it. I was like, maybe like one of the other uh, ballsy people in here can refill the tub with clean water. But no one did. No one did. And finally, a professor came by and he was like, whoa, like, why does the water look like that? And um, and then he started to talk about how it's like contaminated with sulfur. And I was like, excuse me, like, is that bad? And it's just crazy. And um, so like all of our plaster projects have like just a slight uh, tint of pink in it <laughs> because we were we were using pink contaminated water. And um, I'm just going to say right now that smell is gonna haunt my dreams like that sour salty smell um i'm not sure if it was sulfur because from watching supernatural i know that sulfur is supposed to smell like rotten eggs or something like that and it didn't smell like rotten eggs it didn't smell like food it just it smelled chemical and so i don't know what happened to that water but um it was really gross so if you guys ever like if you ever run into something like that, just just turn on the hose. Don't be like me. Just just go for it. Do everyone else a favor. Do yourself a favor and get some clean water for your class. Turn on the hose when you see it because it was terrible. Like we were there for two hours just dipping our hands in gross contaminated pink water. Okay. Um, it is nearing the end of the podcast, and I'll say I really enjoyed just talking to myself for an hour. And I hope you guys enjoyed listening to it. And I feel like um a bit in the high school section, I got a little like not angry, but I got a little worked up thinking about like my rude counselors. So I apologize if I was like raising my voice or all that and it wasn't like relaxing to listen to. But um, I've learned from other videos that um, I just I just shouldn't try to be relaxing all the time because it's it's very difficult. So um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just apologize if um, that that got a bit annoying to listen to, like me ranting about my counselor. But um, yeah. Let me know what you guys thought about this first episode. If you have any more topics that you want, uh, they don't have to be art related because this is my opportunity for you guys to get to know me. So if it's just like about my life that you're interested in or my opinions about uh, non-art related topics, um, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you thought of it. Um, Let me know what you think about school versus art, art school non-art school, art classes, all that stuff. And I'll probably reply to uh, a few of them if there is anything specific that I can think of saying about your comment. But yeah, I really enjoyed this and I'm looking forward for um, an episode two. And yeah, thank you for listening and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.